everybody on here and I'm coming to you with this month's video. I'm um, going to talk this month about some things that are coming up in the codes for June 2024 and that is connected to our past. So this month I'm addressing why your past is such a powerful tool. And this is a thing that we don't really think a lot about most of the time. but really every part of our past is valuable and the past in codes really connects a lot with transformation it connects a lot with aspects of are we going to break through are we going to break down it has a lot of death a lot of ending sort of um, energy to it and that's not always something that we think of in the past but when we do think about it a little bit more we realize that truly the past can't be the past unless we've transformed it or ended or things like that and yes sometimes there are some lingering pieces there to the past and they're still connecting in with the present but all aspects of our past are powerful and they are very very good for those very things of helping us know what to end in our life what to keep moving forward with and what to transform so um, one of the big parts of our past is that it shows us what we have learned and that's really important you know these days and times there's so much emphasis on wiping out the past and we really don't want to do that because there's such a great reference point so the past we can look back into it and we can say okay here's where I was a while back and now here's where I'm at and look at how much difference there is how much growth there's been how much you know what the lessons are that I learned from these different experiences that were going on in my life and all parts again are valuable even if we don't want to repeat them so we might not want to repeat something we might look at something and go yeah that didn't that didn't work out so good <laughs> I'd prefer not to do that again I know I have a few of those things in my life um, but even if we don't want to repeat them they're valuable because they hold this wisdom they hold aspects of just lessons and valuable pieces of information that are showing us sometimes that's what they're showing us is what we do and do not want to repeat so that will become a big thing for us and uh, again seeing that value in them what those experiences were and I can look back and say yeah there were some things that were really fun when I was 20 years old or something like that I would not do them now <laughs> in my life but they were great back then and um so they they hold some maybe joyful or favorable memories for me even if I wouldn't repeat them again um, in there so that's a, that's another part of our past and we want to look at what role has um, the experiences what role was played in our life so when we look back and we take a look on the past things how what was the role of that event or that experience in our life which becomes very very valuable to us right because we realize oh the role of that or the the value of that was to teach me a certain lesson it was to help me become more responsible it was because I wasn't listening to things I needed to be paying attention to all of these different things that it could be there so what is the role you know when you reflect back on your past you want to take a look at that what is the role that these different experiences played in your life because they were all a catalyst for something in some way um, even if it was to teach you about more patience or anything it could be really anything that was there and we want to know how blessed we are or the blessings that came out of things regardless of our experiences so I've done that a lot I've been through a lot of hard experiences in life whether it's been medical things whether it's been um, work things whether it has been just lifestyle things people that know me and my journey over the years of having been homeless at different points and having to struggle for food at different points things like that and yet one of the things that really pulled me through was realizing I'm so incredibly blessed 
regardless of those experiences, regardless of what I have or don't have, I'm so incredibly blessed in my life. And that realization that, again, my life, my joy, my happiness wasn't dependent on how much I had or how easy life was that was up to me to give to myself. So I think that's always a huge, huge part, especially when we're looking at the challenges, especially with the hardships and making those connections that when we're in the present moment and we're seeing these things and, and taking a look going, yeah, we really need to acknowledge those blessings because that's what's going to propel us forward into the more favorable spaces of things. And then we want to know how we have changed or shifted or reshaped. And this um, comes into showing like where our beauty is. Um, and it also shows us, you know, where um, we embraced ugliness along the way, right? So this is kind of that reference point aspect of the past that's so important for us is, is having it to say, okay, here's where I was, here's where I am today. And being able to stop and take a look and go, wow, I have really shifted course a lot. Um, my mindset is different. My attitude is different. My body is different. There's a lot of things that are different. There's a lot of things. And if I don't place the judgment on those saying, oh, it's really good that this happened or really bad that that happened and just see it as something that has happened and I'm sorry we got a lot of little bugs here now <laughs> um, seeing what has happened along the way and just recognizing that and enjoying that really um, seeing that objective aspect because sometimes really a lot of times there are things that aren't necessarily good or bad it's just like this is what has shifted this is what has changed and that helps us to also identify what adjustments we want may want to make or what we want to pay attention to as we move forward in life and to really consider those pieces of things. So knowing how we've shifted and changed also makes a huge difference in there. Um, and again, being able to see, um, you know, it shows us where our beauty has come out along the way from those shifts and changes. And then also, you know, being able to identify, okay, this was this was the ugliness I was in, whether that was materialism or superficial aspects or whatever it was, that's, you know, the part that wasn't so pretty. <laughs> and we all have them. We all have those pieces. <clears throat> and it's part of, that's part of our beauty is when we can actually say, yeah, I had those pieces in there. And then we don't want to repeat the past necessarily. I mean, we can have some second chances. We might have some different things come up, but we don't necessarily want to look to repeat the past or to live in the past. We want to be looking at where can we go from here. And we may have certain experiences or feelings that we may want to um, replicate in some way or to bring in, but we don't necessarily want to repeat things. And I think that that's a a big aspect. Even when things are favorable, we want to allow it to be that favorable, incredible experience that it was and not, you know, not have to do it open, open up to more aspects. I mean, we can feel happiness in many different ways. We can feel joy in many different ways. So considering that we don't have to repeat it, we don't necessarily need or want to repeat the past. We really want to focus on where we're going. We really want to focus on what we have right now and the amazing present space that we're in. Because when we're doing that, of course, that is going to be what sets us forward in a favorable or an unfavorable way. And we want to learn from our past. Um, when we learn from our past, we get second chances at things, which is really amazing. And those second chances give us the ability to create a favorable future um, through wise choices. So when we're, when we're learning things, that's when something will come around again. If we've gotten a lesson or something, we may get it to come around again to see, have we really learned that lesson? Um, are we really past something that we think that we're past? 
are we um, willing to make a wiser choice the next time around? Or maybe we weren't ready for it before. We've learned the lessons we need to have learned. And now we're getting a second chance to try it again under our so-called maybe older, wiser self <laughs> in there. So embracing those second chances, taking a look at them and saying, is this really what I want. Do I even want this now? Or have I shifted away from this and it's not something that I want? You know, uh, um, when we're young, sometimes we want like big fancy houses and expensive cars and all of that things. And, and then sometimes as you get older, you don't really want those things. You just want something simple and easy to manage and, <laughs> and, and something a little bit different. I mean, everybody's different in things. Or sometimes we go down a path and we try something and we didn't handle it well and now we've got the wisdom and the experience and I'll come back around and say yeah do you want to try being in business again do you want to try doing this do you want to try doing that and the world gives us that that second chances so really that's where it comes back to you know when we realize the shifts and the changes and things that we've made we know whether we want to take that second chance or whether that is something that no longer fits for us anymore. And then we really want to take a look at the ancestral energy because that is also part of the past is considering ancestral energy. And that comes down to including um, like multi-generational perspectives, even multicultural perspectives on things. And this is the aspect of true and timeless wisdom. In many ways, these are the things that are passed down from generation to generation. And the ancestral energy can be our personal bloodline, or it can also be connected to um, cultural blood, you know, cultural energy or uh, ancestral energy from an area where they learned how to deal with certain things and the nature, the land, things like that. Um, so there's aspects of that, but it's in bridging the multiple generations. It's in bridging um, the different cultures of things that really help us to keep true wisdom alive. Because if we don't embrace those interactions and that wisdom, then we, we lose it. And uh, a lot of times when we have difficulties that come up in the world, for example, uh, they try to get us to get rid of the history. They try to get us to get rid of that ancestral wisdom because they don't want people understanding how the past is repeating itself over and over again. Because those that work in more unfavorable ways or, or not favorable for humanity or life on Earth or those sorts of things, then, you know, they keep repeating the same tactics over and over again. So uh, really taking a look at that and saying, how can we keep it alive? You know, we always think when we're young, oh, those older people, they don't, they don't know what they're talking about. They're old. They're <laughs> they don't know what's happening in the world today. But in reality, most of them do. And I think that's important to keep in mind because They've seen it before. It may not play out exactly the same way or with the same people. It might have some slight variations, but the same patterns are repeating. And in, here again, until we grow out of those lessons, they're going to keep repeating in there. And whether we like our history or not, whether we agree with it, whether we think it's right, wrong, or anything like that, we don't want to get rid of the history because the history is so very important. It is so incredibly um, valuable for learning from. And sometimes, you, again, by keeping the history alive, you can look at it and say, yeah, we don't want to go down that path again. Or, yeah, we want to try something similar to this and see what we can do with it today with the wisdom and knowledge we have today. So history is always important to keep alive. Um, even though we don't want to live in the past and, and exist in the past necessarily, but the past has a lot of, of great things. And I've said it before in many videos and many talks that I've done is that um, we really, we, we really want to, um, and I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> but we really want to take a look at that history because it is important. We don't want to alleviate it. We don't want to get rid of it. Um, 
it doesn't matter whether we like it or not because it's a learning tool it's a point of reference for us and and I guess where I was going was that we've regressed actually a lot because we've become less and less self-reliant um, in our cultures and our societies and some of the most evolved tactics when you look at moving huge stones through sound and vibration that's much more evolved than all of the equipment that we have today <laughs> uh, in so many ways and and so when we stop and think about these things that history actually helps us to remember things that work they help us to keep alive our self-sufficiency they help us to um, find ways of doing things or remember ways of doing things that work perfectly great you know I've even seen this come back around recently where I've seen some kids and it's like they're holding up a, a you know a, a, like a cloth bag and they're like look you don't have to throw this one away <laughs> and it's like yeah a hundred years ago you never threw them away anyways because you know you couldn't afford to you couldn't you know you this was just natural so it's interesting to see them coming back around to things that were done you know a hundred years ago or 150 years ago and being so excited like it's the new greatest fad and uh, so it's a lot of fun to to see those things and and again these cycles these shifts these things I mean uh, they they run through every aspect of our life and we just don't want to let go of that past. It is one of the most valuable tools that we have. And when something enters our past and truly is there and we don't have to bring it back around, um, we know we've transformed it. And when we do bring it back around, we know, look, I can bring it back around in a, maybe a slightly different way. Or I know the adjustments that I want to make for this time around and embrace and enjoy that. So I am so grateful to be able to bring this to you. Um, get out here a little bit in nature, even with all the bugs. <laughs> we have some rain coming in this week. We've got some warmer temps this week, and the warmer temps are nice. It was great to be gone for the weekend speaking, and now I'm back. But hey, if you'd like to check out more of my work, you can certainly do that. Go over to my website at CompassionCodes.com, and uh, the Code Journey book is on there. There's still plenty of the year left to pick up a copy if you'd like to work with this year's book. I'm um, preparing, planning, hoping <laughs> to release the 2025 book uh, August 17th. So hopefully that's all going to go smooth enough for me to be able to do that. And uh, looking forward to getting that out to you. And in the meantime, I will see you next month. Take care, everybody.